Um, guys, name's Albert. Nice to meet you guys. Okay. How are you guys feeling? Good? good. Nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, quick show of hands. How many of y'all have been to a formal school dance? Yeah, all right. Well, that's quite a lot of you. Now, I'm going to be asking a series of questions. And when I say a question, it, and you've asked yourself the same question or something along the same lines, just give me a quick nod. Just keep engaged. So it's weeks before the dance, and you're deciding if you even want to go. Are my friends going to be there? All right. All right, great, they're coming. But where and when should we meet up? And more importantly, who am I going to ask? And what should I wear? Fast forward to the day of the dance. The line's long, and the dance floor seems empty. When should I go in? Then we finally enter the dance, and immediately we are overwhelmed. Our senses are bombarded by external stimuli. Loud music is blaring and conversations are everywhere. You know, our expectations are set high, and our mind takes its toll. Everyone's dancing, do I do the same? Or no one's dancing, what do I do? You know, these are just a few of the decisions that we make prior and during an event that's supposed to bring us satisfaction. Dances, they're supposed to be fun a way for us to let loose, but they can also raise discomfort. Well, this prompts a question of why. Why do we go through so much trouble just to please others? Do these moments of social stress really add value? I mean, I've had some of my deepest, most insightful thoughts alone. And it all boils down to who we are at the core. Sorry. <laughs> We are social beings, so it's obvious that a lot of our decisions are contingent on the decisions and opinions of others. This is external decision making, seeking validation from others to decide what to do. It's not a bad thing. As with all things, there are pros and cons. We should listen to others because they can provide different perspectives and insights to help us make more rational decisions. But this form of decision making, if it's the only one, can be detrimental. We, can, we will claw for the respect of friends, family, peers, among others. We judge our self-value based on how others perceive us, as reflected by social media. This quote-unquote cheap mentality of us following shepherds, these glamorized uh, images of celebrities, role models. It's great for drawing inspiration from who they are and what they've done, and channeling that to improve ourselves, but we can't strive to be replicas. It's also because we crave company that we compare ourselves to others and begin to think we deserve a certain life. It's far easier to blend the cards that we're dealt with instead of focusing on how to maximize our hand. Why are we privileged enough to go to school and complain about a course load when children worldwide would abandon all they have to get a good education? We begin sentences with, if only, if only this, if only that, if only I had his financial circumstances, if only I had her parents. Life isn't fair, but we expect it to be. And as summarized by Oliver Emberton, our idea of fairness is self-interest. Well, controlled by external influences, we aren't living. What I'm trying to say is that our headway in life needs to come from within. Our decisions should be based on our own values, and the question is how. I'm here today to talk about making informed decisions based on these internalized values. I believe that taking the time to deconstruct, recenter, and rebuild are key to making the autonomous decisions that are ultimately gratifying and meaningful. I messed up the slides, but first step, deconstruction. All this step entails is taking the time to strip apart the superfluous to know our values better. The goal is to reach a stage of understanding where we can separate wants from our needs and temporarily let go of those wants. I'm advocating for minimal living because it leaves us, leaves, leaves us with more opportunities to experience things we may have ignored in the past and to think critically. There are proven benefits to a simpler lifestyle. You obtain a clearer mind, become more healthy from dropping over commitments, have more freedom and time, and above all, you can find clarity. And the philosophy really is simple. The less you have, the more you can appreciate. And as poet Maya Angelou once said, we need less than we think we need. Now, that doesn't mean going home and slapping a free sign on all your furniture and, or like driving to Goodwill to donate your clothes. It's about living with less, and less is up to your judgment. Whether it be toys, decorations, technology, cooking utensils, you name it. 
depending on what you consider you actually need versus what you can afford to let go, keep or let go of something. There's one guy, his name's Nicholas Bergman, who has a net worth of $2 billion. Yet, he lives out of hotels, he doesn't own a car or even a watch. The one thing that he does own and takes pride in is his private jet, which is suitable for his busy, hectic lifestyle. And with these fewer obligations to attend to and fewer things to worry about, find your sanctuary and identify your core values there. Do yoga, swim, or follow through with any other, any other channel that you enjoy and can provide a noiseless environment for you to think and reflect. The way to identify your own values is ultimately your own as well. Again, there's no rigid pathway to get there. It's a very much individualized process. Now think about the times you felt the most content, the most proud, the good times. What led you to feel this way? On the other side of the spectrum, think about what made you feel sad, angry, anxious, you know, depressed, the bad things. Again, what led you to feel this way? Ask yourselves these questions when you have time in the future. We've just had a break, and hopefully you all have time to declutter and you know, decompress. And before we get caught up in the, in the rigor of the new cycle of a school semester, and our lives get more and more crowded, give yourself the time this weekend to reflect and to start deconstructing. Moving on to recentering. All right, this is the midpoint for you guys to decide which path you want to go down. Scenario one, take the case of Daniel Norris, the pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. He has a $2 million signing bonus under his belt, yet he lives in his 1978 Volkswagen van. He's free to drive off when and where he wants to, and in his own words, he can sleep on the beach and wake up to the waves. What I find interesting about Norris is that he genuinely believes that, quote, just because money's there doesn't mean you gotta have nicer things that you used to have. He wants to live a normal life without luxuries. And Norris values being with nature, responding to its calls when they call out to him. And he has this freedom and joy within this minimalistic lifestyle. He realizes that more isn't necessarily better. And instead, desiring less helps him live a more focused, enjoyable life. I mean, this doesn't apply to everyone, but if you do relate to Norris, boldly go through this avenue. Or scenario two, the rebuilding stage. Remember the things that you separated? Bring them back, but only choose the ones that add value instead of noise. In my opinion, this may be the more practical of the two options. We might not need something, but if it, if it makes our lives easier, it's in our best interest to bring them back. Just know how to manage them effectively. So what's the big so what of it all, right? The big meaning of the work, right? In a society that seems to be updating itself every second, it may seem foolish, even dangerous, to reflect. But don't worry, the world's still gonna be there when you come back. Hopefully the biggest thing that will have changed is you. As our lives become increasingly more complex, there are perpetual sources of noise. That's just the fact of life. There's always going to be friend gossip, events happening in our immediate and global communities, you know, familial and cultural expectations and burdens that we have to live towards, that we have to uphold. The list goes on. Through internalizing our values, <clears throat> we can reduce that noise by deciding what we really want for ourselves. That way, we don't stay in an emotionally neutral state. We always have a driving force and a goal to work towards will acquire sustained motivation and hopefully happiness. Quoting Rick Sanchez from the hit comedy, Rick and, Rick and Morty, don't be sheep, all right? Your decisions should be your own. Thank you.